Hi, I'm Ed Sproing. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at AlphaWave Semi with Ali Reza Parsifar. I'm going to talk today about PCIe over optics. Ali Reza, where are you seeing the need for PCIe over optics and what exactly is that? It's all really about the AI and the expansion of the data. Uh, with uh, trillions um, of parameters in the new models of the, of the data and tens of thousands of GPUs or um, XPUs that needs to be connected, uh, we see the need for uh, more connectivity with uh, also the extension of the reach in these connectivities. And you just have more data that needs to be moved around, right? But there's always been a price for moving that data. Does this help? Absolutely. So the idea behind the uh, linear pluggable optics is to eliminate uh, some of the intermediate uh, components in the link to reduce and cut the latency, as well as reducing the power of those components like, uh, like memory expansion that CXL needs with like tens of meters. Now it's possible to do over optics directly. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Ali Reza, what are we looking at? So here we are looking at our um, 128 gig capable series that can run PCIe Gen 7 rates. In this setup, we connect the uh, optical module, which is the channel here, through an OSFP connector to the test chip. So the channel includes a portion of electrical part and the optical part. So where do you start running into challenges? Well, people have been talking about optics for a long time, and actually they've been in use for a long time in certain areas. So you think about the uh, long haul trunk lines, they think about uh, uh, some of the server racks to the storage, SSDs, but it hasn't come that close to the chip in the package. What's changed? So uh, this is a different class of optics and uh, the purpose is dif different and the power envelope is different in this solution. So here uh, the challenges is um, the, the channel, the behavior is different compared to the electrical versions and your uh, receiver needs to have the capabilities to, to clean up those uh, non-idealities that comes from the optical channel, which was not in the classic electrical receivers that connects to the retimer. With this solution, uh, we can eliminate the need of a retimer, and basically we can uh, remove, we can reduce the power of the link, the total data transmission power picojoule, in terms of picojoule per bit. Where exactly is this getting used? So now with the new uh, infrastructure for AI and data centers, um, fundamentally we are looking at a different type of architecture uh, with having a pools of memory in some racks and pools of compute in other racks, you would need extension of the reach between these and share these memory pools with the compute pools. Right, so this is all about when you take, for example, you've got DRAM sitting there and you've got CXL connecting multiple different servers or multiple different racks to this memory. You now need to move this stuff a lot faster than you did in the past, right? And this is really what it's all about. You want to move it fast, you want to move it very low power. Absolutely. And that's where the, the speed and data rate of the series per lane comes into the picture. What you're looking at is a PCI Gen 7 uh, data rate capable, which is 128 gig, gigabit per second per lane. Uh, this can go up to the by 16 lanes for each PCIe or CXL link. And the new generations, which is going to be 256 gig or UA links, which might use also optical solutions as well, would be an answer for the higher data rate and higher bandwidth for these type of solutions. Inside a data center, one of the big costs is also cooling. This gets around some of that, right? How much does it help? Well. If you think about it, with eliminating the, uh, the retimers in the middle, you definitely save some power. So that helps. Although the power envelopes and structure will be a little bit different because some of the um, heavy lifting will be pushed through the main chip. And we need to think about that in the design phase. And just from the standpoint of the optics, they also can be affected by heat as well, right? So you have to think about the thermal implications and how you catch those signals, how you filter them properly? That's right. So definitely one of the challenges with optical uh, solutions is the sensitivity to the thermal as well as the reliability with the temperature changes. And You're dealing with two very different elements though as you get from electrical to optical. How do you build this into the system? What kind of challenges do you have connecting this to the systems themselves? Right. So definitely interoperability is a very important factor 
in these setups. So we would need to have an interoperable, we need to have an, a standardized link between the electrical circuits and these optical modules. There's been a problem in bringing these optical signals into the boards, into the servers in the past. There really was no standard until probably, what, about four or five years ago where the people started saying, okay, we really need to focus on this. What have you done here? What are you seeing happening in the market? And how does that change things? Yeah, so like any other link, we need to have a standard to be enable the whole ecosystem so that we have multi-vendor solutions. Uh, one of the examples is the initiative that the OIF has started for these type of solutions that basically defines the standard for these type of links between the electrical all the way to the optical channel. And the multi-vendor links have been tested and demonstrated in multiple shows in the past couple of years. How much of this has to be customized? How much of this is already out in the marketplace? Right. So at AlphaWave, we have been looking at the industry trends specifically with the optical links in the past couple of years. So our surgery solutions already have nonlinear capabilities to compensate for the non-idealities that comes from the optical link, which is not present in the electrical only links. And with that, we are looking at one of the examples with one of our partners that we are showing a very good BR as well as open eye and the histogram. And this gives a sense to the customers and to the market that how available it is. Um, currently, right now, without any additional customization. Does that eye ever close as you're using this, or is it, is it pretty consistent, or does it change over time? No, actually, that's one of the good things about the optical links. It's pretty stable. So as long as there is a good temperature control on the optical module, uh, the link is very stable. And we have demonstrated this for um, days, actually, in some of the shows. So we don't have any concern with that. Ali Reza, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.